Hi everybody, I am Bucket and thank you for watching. Uh, today I'm going to be working on some Christmas presents. Ingenious little tool here. It may look like a normal piece of wood that's screwed together in an L shape, but it's actually a stop block. So you clamp this to your rip fence, right? Put the clamp here, rip fence is over here. Your piece that you're cutting can hit this and be pushed forward to the blade. Now you have three and a quarter inches for your off cuts to move without hitting the blade. Now let's say you want to make continued or continuous one and a quarter inch cuts and they're always going to be the same size. What you should never do is take your piece of wood and put the end of it against your rip fence, use your miter and continually cut. What's going to happen is this off cut piece is going to come back toward the blade and then it's going to fire back at you. Um, so what you do, you take your ingenious little block here set your rip fence out to where it needs to be. Take your block, clamp it into place. Now when you make your cut, you have all this space for your off-cut piece to go away in. It's not going to come back to the blade and shoot back at you. And if you wanted to make something with micro adjustments, just add a little screw down here. I got a bunch of little cuts done. Now, unfortunately, I had the least amount of Purple Heart, and that's what I wanted to use the most. But we have Sapel, Sapelli, whatever, cherry, um, walnut, Purple Heart, maple, and Paduak. Alrighty, I've spent a couple hours now going by uh, piece by piece and trying to close up these gaps as much as possible using a sanding block. Um, a fret leveling block it's all aluminum um, this is just a back backstop so whenever i have a piece here it doesn't slide forward um, i think i have everything to where i want it to be if i brace the table saw and pull in on the sides i get no more wiggle i was getting some wiggle um, this piece right here had a little bit of a bow to it because there's a knot on this edge i think it's this piece yeah this little knot here was causing me an issue. So I had to spend quite a bit of time on that piece. I'm glad I decided to add the uh, walnut accent pieces. I just noticed I wanna work this piece of uh, Purple Heart just a little bit more because it's not the Purple Heart. Ah, I see it, not right here. Got to work on this piece just a little bit more, and then we should be good to go. I like it. Do you like it? Think my mom will like it? I hope so. So... Now we're gonna glue everything together. I can only, I have to do this in two sections initially before I can run it through the planer because uh, the planer is only 13 inches wide and this is much wider uh, and I can't run cross grain. So um, I need to arrange this. I haven't done that yet. Arrange this so all my grain is facing the same way and then uh, start gluing half by half or half and half. So All right, project update. Sister's cutting board is done. She has a much smaller kitchen, so I'm going with a 10 by 11 and a half. This will be cut right across here to be flush. And then I'll do a flush cut down here to uh, square it up. This just needs sanded and oiled. Mom's board here, this is the bottom side of it. Um, I had to do it in two pieces because of the size of the planer. Let's focus on what you can actually see here. Ba -ba -ba. So I have to join these two pieces between the, um, what is that, Sapelli and Purple Heart. Let it dry overnight before I can sand and oil this one, so. Later. Just finished the trim cuts on my sister's cutting board. Put a little bit of water on there from the tree here, but uh, that's not gonna hurt anything. Now this one is ready for sanding. I have to remove the um, sleeping there. You can see <laughs> neighbor's dogs are going crazy. Um, you know, planers are gonna snipe, it just happens. So I'll smooth this one out. 
and uh, let's go over here. I've got sketchy stuff going on with this one, but uh, it works. So when I clamped this down with these big bar clamps, um, it got a bow in it here in the center. So I had to counteract that bow by putting tension and twist on the other side. I just noticed this when I made my last cut this corner chipped off flashback so uh, it's a good thing I'm gonna round these edges off I didn't plan this is the bottom yes this is the bottom didn't plan on rounding the bottom off but uh, it'll have to it'll have to be done um, Right now I'm just working on getting the snipe out. I'm using 100 grit. Should probably go 80, but this should be fine. It's just a pain in the butt to hold this onto the table. It'll be fine. Fortunately, despite my best efforts, we had a little f***y bucky with my mom's board. Um, the glue here, or I'm sorry, whenever I clamped everything, it bowed just a little bit. So I put clamps on the other side to counter the bow. Unfortunately, the gap had already opened up and I didn't see it. Um, I've had to do the old trick of using a acid brush. I'll show you what those are. These are acid brushes. Put a little bit of glue on the end separate the bristles and shove it down in there and then take my bag from my sander and just get a little bit of uh, salt dust out and you take it and you rub it in there it's going to be a little bit different color but that's not going to be a problem at all because once this is sanded again and then the oil goes on it it's not even going to be noticeable this is the back side of the board so there's going to be uh, rubber feet in the corners. The front side of the board had some issue. So I just got done adding the glue to that side or adding the, the sawdust to this side. Um, once this glue cures, I'm not worried about this at all because another layer is going to, uh, it's going to have another layer knocked down with 80 grit. Um, so I have, I have to set mom's board aside for now. The next day. We got the wild weenie hunting prey over here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, I have these clear feet and these are simply um, like glass table top uh, feet between the metal and the, the glass. Uh, I can't show you, there's one like right here where the glass sits on the metal. But these were inexpensive and all you have to do is drill a small hole and they press right in. I'm going to drill the hole just slightly smaller so they have a snugger fit. I'm not particularly fond of having to drill into brand new projects, but I have my holes marked out, uh, use a square, and got them all figured out. Got just a little bit of tear out on my sapili here, or I'm sorry, that's cherry. Now I am going to put a little bit of glue in there, just a dab to help hold those in more. There's four coats of oil on them. 
Now I can do the wax and finalize the feet and get them wrapped up. Just beautiful. There we go. Final wax is done. The feet are installed and curing now. I don't want to flip them over. I'm letting the uh, weight of the boards settle the feet. Just look at these colors and that figuring and the different light. Oh, it's beautiful. Same over here. In addition to that, My dad has also been making some things for my mom. A new stool, new stools. And this will hold three large mason jars with kitchen cooking utensils in them. Get it, baby. Ah. Buddy, watch what your mom is unwrapping. This is a special gift. Jack, Jack, sit here and watch what your mommy's wrapping. This is a special gift, or unwrapping. Custom built to match. Wow! <laughs> it's gorgeous! That is pretty. Holy cow, how did you get those? Oh. Are we good? Are you good? <laughs> you know, I don't know. How make stuff just means. Everything. Oh, did I get one too? <laughs>
You said you wanted something that you could sit on to put your socks and whatever. Oh, okay. That is paper on here. I just want to get to my cookies. Good girl. <laughs> what is that? What is that? 